Hi guys, Lou here. Welcome back to Acorn Hill. Happy New Year. Happy and healthy and safe 2021 to everyone out there. I appreciate you joining me today on the new year episode of Acorn Hill. What do we do on New Year's Eve? Lots of parties, lots of celebrations, a lot of festivities. I gotta show you a mini tour of our bar. Uh, this is a bar that I built uh, a few, a couple of years ago using some reclaimed turned wood from chairs that we got from a consignment shop. Um, we got them for a song and uh, once we were ready to replace our dining chairs, I made sure that we saved the turned wood uh, that I thought was very unique. The dining chairs that I was talking about was an original set of six that we decided to repurpose into a mini bar. Purchased back in 2008, we knew we'd be using them for some project and relocating down to Acorn Hill in North Carolina when we built it, we knew we'd want a spot in the home that will have a mini bar. Chairs were made of walnut and if they were good for chairs, we knew that they would also be good to act as frames for the mini bar. I wanted to show you what I did with that to build a new bar, a mini bar that is within our family room. And so along with that mini tour, I will show you some choice liquors that I am restocking the bar with. And give you a basic on what is required uh, if you want to put up your own home bar. So hopefully you like this video today. It's going to be an exciting, unique, and uh, kind of out of this world type of celebration. But you know what? We press on. We move forward, all of us. We are equal opportunity participants in this unique New Year's Eve celebration. So from our household to yours, happy and safe and healthy 2021s from Kathleen and I here on Acorn Hill. Let's go to the video. The turned wood legs of the chair measured a standard 16 inches high. I ended up using 10 individual turned wood legs. Our mini bar is basically a three-tiered, three-level portable cart. The cart measures 34 inches wide, 18 inches deep, and 40 inches tall. Any homeowner that likes to entertain knows that any mini bar slash side cart is an essential tool, essential equipment for any entertaining, having wine, liquor, and spirits ready for any form of drink. And with an easy to build mini cart like this, you don't have to end up schlepping your way to your local pub just to get your good favorite drink. As I mentioned earlier, this cart measured 40 inches tall. That's because I have the wood turns of the chairs at 16 inches high, one on top of the other. This helped create that three tiered table cart look that I want. For the three levels that acted as the cart surfaces, I reimagined wood panels from an art supply store. Then I connected them with the turned legs to create this yet sturdy DIY side table. With three easy access surfaces for stashing odds and ends for the minibar, there surely is no excuse for me not to be able to make a good mean drink for any guests that come our way. Bar carts that are similar to what I built were all the rage back at the turn of the century. They were industrial looking with a refined design on tempered glass and polished metal. When I built this bar cart, I made sure it has three roomy shelves to offer ample space for a cocktail bar on top, a space for all the liquor and spirits in the middle, and a spacious bottom layer that is occupied by a wine rack that contains all our choice wines for the season. All right, so let's talk about some home bar basics. A home bar doesn't have to be a headache. Invest in basic equipment, stock up on essential liquors, and you can have a spread that will impress amateurs and even make professionals nod in quiet approval. Proper storing of liquor is also something that one needs to know when owning a minibar. Liquor will keep for a long time, particularly in a cool place away from direct sunlight. I stored all our liquor and spirits on the second level of this bar cart. For a basic set of liquors, I suggest cognac. Cognac is good for sidecars, brandy milk punches, daisies and smashes. White rum, it's also good for daiquiris and mojitos. Gin, which is my favorite drink at the moment, good for martinis, tonics, Tom Collinses, etc. Bourbon, bourbon is good for Manhattans, old fashions and whiskey sours. And who doesn't love vodka? 
vodka is the workhorse of the liquor cabinet. Use it in basic drinks such as vodka tonics, screwdrivers, and my favorite, a vodka martini. And also don't forget your tequila, just good for margaritas, margarita sunrise, and palomas. Of course, a basic mini bar wouldn't be complete without the mixers, like Juan Tro. It's a bar essential. It's clean, full of natural orange flavor, and not too sweet. Then there's red vermouth. Red vermouth is very good for Manhattans. Apart from red, there's also the white vermouth, which is good for truly sublime martinis. Okay, now that we know how to set up and stock up a home bar, I'll now give you a tour of the top layer of our mini bar. To the left of the shelf is a small portion of our collection of mirror balls, also known as butler's spheres. First introduced in 13th century Venice by artisan glass blowers, mirror balls are now a common sight, particularly in yards and gardens as decorations. But the origin of these mercury glass balls really came from the inside of the house. These reflective globes would be placed strategically on a dining room sideboard so Victorian era servants could remain outside the room and still see when service is required. Although many are still available and made from delicately blown glass, some modern gazing balls are manufactured of reflective metal for durability. When I built this mini bar, I had the vision of putting this bar cart under a painting by Filipino artist Romeo Tabuena. What I have is a reproduction of Romeo Tabuena's Man with Rooster, painted sometime in the early 1960s. All right, so I showed you and told you how I built this, where it came from, the concept, and how it came about, along with the different elements that make this mini bar uniquely ours. Now let me show you what I will be serving and making for New Year's Eve to make this pandemic New Year's Eve celebration truly a special one. Hendrix Gin. Hendrix Gin is a brand from Scotland and it uses a rare copper still built in the 19th century to gently infuse the gin with cucumber, rose petal, and juniper berries. I have some basic bamboo toothpicks that are good for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. In front I have my old Icelandia gin that I got from Iceland the last time we were there. We have the San German elderflower liqueur. And in the back is something special given to us by my niece, Nix. It's Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey. It's inspired and made by the first African-American master distiller, Nathan Nearest Green. Uncle Nearest is very smooth on the palate, and it's the most awarded new American premium whiskey brand in the U.S. and an excellent addition to my growing collection of wines and spirits. Up next is a really good French aperitif called Lillet. It's a brand that dates back in 1872, made by brothers who are distillers and merchants of wines and spirits found in the south of France. Lillet is an aperitif wine. It's a blend of Bordeaux wines and citrus liqueur, and intended to be served very well chilled. Up next, and it's my first time to try this, it's called Gator Bite. It's a Louisiana artisanal blend of Bayou Rum infused with Satsuma oranges. So. Rum, Satsuma oranges, made in Louisiana. Sounds better and better, doesn't it? I really don't know what this tastes like, but I'm willing to give it a try, all in the name of research. And moving right along with spirit, wine, and liquor out of the way, let's go to stemware and what we will be using for tonight's celebration. Let's talk about glassware. For everyday use in your home bar, you only need six or eight of each of these three basic types a short glass, a tall glass, and a stem glass. For New Year's Eve, we've set aside our basic champagne flutes and champagne glasses. I also made sure my barware equipment is ready in the back, needed to mix in cocktails for a simpler or a little bit more complicated drinks. We plan on serving fish roe for our hors d'oeuvres tonight, and so we took out our mother of pearl serveware they are all made in the Philippines. And there you have it, my basic tricks and tips on how to build, set up, and stock a home bar. Now before I forget, a home bar should never be relegated only to people who like alcohol. No one should be punished for passing up a cocktail, but if plain soda and canned juice are the only alternatives, boy oh boy, an abstainer will likely wind up pouting in the corner. 
So look, fortunately, there are enough flavorful non-alcoholic beverages to fill an entire bar and bring cheer to the soberest of souls. Why not mix freshly squeezed orange or grapefruit juice with a splash of seltzer to make a light, bright cocktail? Also, try sweetened, diluted lime and lemon juice served over crushed ice or whip up a fresh or frozen berry in a blender with ice and a dash of lime. I hope I piqued your interest in considering building your own bar or better yet, building and creating your own mini bar for your home entertainment. Homesteading is the overall concept of this channel. Anything from gardening, building, uh, keeping, nesting, and entertaining and gathering. So I hope you enjoyed what we've shown you this year. It's not even a year old and, and we are very fortunate and blessed to have all these material and content that we can share with everyone. To those of you who have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you're learning something new and something different each time you watch our video. The beauty of YouTube, you can always do it online, on demand, anytime you want. And if you happen to stumble on our video, make sure that you click on that like button, make sure you share it and spread the word about Acorn Hill to your friends, and most importantly, subscribe. There is that subscribe button for a reason and all it's waiting is for you tapping on that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell icon as well. That will let you know of any new material and content that we're putting out on the channel. I'm excited about the coming year. I'm liking this media and I'm liking everyone's involvement and everybody's engagement. I appreciate your trust and I appreciate your time. Here on Acorn Hill, God bless everyone and may you have a safe and happy new year. Bye-bye for now.